In the last lesson, we wrote a quiz app that used three different lists. In this lesson, we'll learn how to use loops with lists. Loops can be used to visit every single item in a list. This is called traversing a list or list traversal. So here we have a list of colors and we can visit each item, blue, yellow, red, in order. The simplest way to do this is with the for each item in list loop. So let's go look at App Inventor. If we look in the control drawer after the selection statement, if we see three different kinds of loops. We've already used this first one to draw shapes, the, the counter control for each number loop. Um, but the next one is for each item in lists. So this is a great one to loop through a list. So this is a, a simple um, app where we have a list of colors. And so we can get that list and say for each item in this list, what we want to do is put that item, let's get the item variable, into the label. So I'm joining it to whatever is in the label currently with a backslash n, which is a new line. If I run this, here's my show button, it just traverses the list and puts blue and then yellow and then red into the label. So each time through this loop, this item variable becomes one of these items in the list starting from the first item all the way to the end. In the AP pseudocode, there is also a for each loop that looks exactly the same as, as App Inventor. It's for each item in list, and you mentioned the list, and then you can just use that variable item to um, that will successively be each item in the list. So this is the simplest loop to, to, to use with a list. But you can also use the for each number loop. This is the counter controlled loop that we've used in the past to draw shapes. Um, but it's a little bit more complicated. This time we have a number and we can use this number as the index of the list. Um, so we want to set up the number to count from one to the length of the list. And each time through the list, we want to select the list item at that index, at that number. So let's try this in App Inventor. So instead of the for each item loop, what we want is the for each number loop, but we don't want to visit five elements. We want to visit whatever the length of the list is. So we can look in the list drawer and grab a length of list and put our colors list there. So we get the length of the list colors. So for this um, list, since there's only three items, this loop will run three times. And then in here, we can put our set label uh, block, but we can't just get the item. We have to get the item at a certain index. We have to use this number. Um, so there is a select block in here, select list item. And this will get us um, this will get us from the colored list the item at the numbered index. So whatever your number is in the loop. So first time around, this will be um, index one. Next time, it'll be index two. And the next time, it will be index three. So if we run this loop, you'll see that it does exactly the same thing. But this time, it's using the index. In AP Pseudocode, you can do the same with the repeat loop. Um, so first they set up a variable called index and here I've renamed number to index so that is parallel and you can see that we're using this variable index here and you repeat the length of the list times so the loop runs length of list times and then when you're displaying the item you use the square brackets to indicate um, the item at a certain index in the list and then each time through the loop, you add one to index. So that happens automatically in the for each index uh, number loop here. It adds one each time. So the first time around, it'll be um, the list item at index one. Next time around, once you do add one to it, it'll be list item number two, and then list item number three. And then if you're done, if that's the length of your list, you would come out of the loop. So Notice that the square brackets are used here to get an item from a list at a certain index. 
Thus, thus these square brackets are used in many text-based languages um, like Java and JavaScript and so on. Um, so in App Inventor, we use the select list item block that does exactly the same thing as the square brackets in AP Pseudocode. So here's a more complicated example using AP Pseudocode. So we set up a list with item one, item two, and item three in it. And then immediately, list item number one becomes new item one. So this gets overwritten, and now it becomes new item one. And then when we display it, it will print out new item one instead of the old item one. Then we change i to two. And so notice that you can use a variable in here too. So now when we display list i, i has become two. So instead of the first element, it prints out the second element, which is item two. So you can see the power of using variables here to switch between different list items and to use a loop with them and go through all of them. You can also do a partial traver traversal of a list. So if you have a longer list, so here we have a list of eight items. If I just want to visit the first five items, I could change this loop to just repeat five times instead of the length of the list and just visit the first five. There's also other list operations that exist both in AP Pseudocode and in App Inventor. So there's an insert um, to the list at index i this new value, this new item, or remove from the list a certain item at index i, or append to the list um, another value. Um, so you can see that these are very parallel to the App Inventor blocks that also exist. Um, in App Inventor, there's a lot of different list blocks, though you should look through them and you might find some of them useful. So the list is a very powerful data abstraction, and when we pair it with the algorithm of a loop, we get an even more powerful abstraction because now we can um, write shorter code that visits every single item in the list. And if we change this list so that is hundreds of items, we don't have to change our code at all. It will still work. So have fun with lists and loops this week.